Hi, I'm Keith from E-Motors Direct, and today I'll take you through my quick start guide for the Tigo Westinghouse F510 VFD. Find the full manual linked in the video description for a complete list of parameters. The Tico F510 VFD series is considered a heavy duty drive, available in up to 800 horsepower and is specifically made for fan and pump applications. The standout feature for the F510 is its simple to select preset application parameters for common fan and pump applications, making it very user friendly. The drive also includes a built-in pump cascade control for up to four pumps. This allows for better coordination and control for multiple pumps working together. The F510 handles wide variations in load. So if you have large and sustained spikes in load, the F510 is a solid option. In order to minimize the error and bring the system closer to the set point, these drives also come with two separate PID loop controls. I'll do a quick overview of the drive ports and terminals. If you're already familiar, jump to the next chapter of this video. This panel here is a cover that opens to the control terminals and communication port. This is where you'll hook up your laptop if you intend to configure settings that way. You can also copy the settings from one drive to apply them to another. Looking at the front terminals where you'll connect any external controls. These are relay outputs. These terminals are used to operate another component that operates with the motor, such as indicator lights or fans. The S1 through 24VG terminals are for digital inputs. 24V and 24BG terminals are separate and distinct from each other. You'll put your dry contacts between the appropriate S terminals and 24BG. 24BG is the common that completes the circuit. S1 through S8 are the terminals where you'll connect buttons, switches, and sensors. And then 10V to GND are analog inputs and outputs. 10V and negative 10V are the 10 volt DC signal output for the connected device. AI1 and AI2 are multifunction analog inputs that can accept a current or voltage signal while AO1 and AO2 are multifunction analog outputs that can produce a current or voltage output. These terminals allow the drive to interface with external controls or data collection systems. Ground is the common ground for all the analog terminals. And finally, the connections at the bottom, L1, L2, and L3, are the connections to provide single or three-phase power to the VFD. In single-phase setups, L1 is the power input and L2 is the neutral. In three-phase setups, L1, L2, and L3 are each connected to a phase. T1, T2, and T3 are the output lines that go to the motor. And these are the ground terminals. We'll make these power input connections to start up our BFD and start configuring. Okay, let's dive into the actual drive setup. On the first power up, we have to do the keypad setup. Press display slash function until you see 00, zero basic fun, like this. Today, we'll set three parameters, which is everything you need to know for the basic setup. Number one, motor rotation, either forwards or backwards. Number two, the main run source, either through the VFD or with a start stop switch. And number three, how you want to control the frequency, either with the arrows or dial. Once your keypad is set up, we can start setting our parameters. First, we'll navigate to 00-01, which is motor rotation. Open group 00 and select item 01. Set this parameter to zero for forward rotation or one for reverse rotation. We'll set ours to forward rotation and press enter to save. Next, we'll look at how you want to control the run signal to the motor. Highlight number two for run source. If you want to control your motor through the VFD, you'll have a value of zero. If you want to control the motor with a start stop switch, you'll use a value of one. Make your selection and press enter. Next, we'll determine the frequency command source. Highlight number five for frequency source. If you want to control the frequency through the keypad, keep the value at zero. If you prefer to use an external potentiometer to adjust the frequency, change the value to one. Make your selection and press enter. Perfect. Now let's head back to the group list and start inputting our motor data into the VFD. You'll find all this info on your motor nameplate. In some cases, the nameplate won't have all the information you're looking for. That's fine. Just use whatever information you have. Start by entering the motor current, which is parameter 02-01. Motor data is entered in group 02. Press the display slash function button once to return to the list of groups. Highlight group 02 and press enter. 
Next, highlight number one for motor current. Find the current rating on your motor nameplate, which might be indicated as amps, FLA, or current. Set the parameter and press enter to save. The next parameter is motor rated speed under 02-03. Highlight number three and press enter. Our motor is rated for 1800 RPM, so we'll set that and press enter. Next, we'll assign the number of motor poles, 02-07. Highlight number seven, press enter. It's important to make sure that the motor rated RPM matches the number of motor poles. Next is the motor rated voltage under 02-04. Highlight number four. Set that to 230 volts, then press enter to save. We'll find motor rated power under 02-05. Highlight number five, press enter. This setting is rated as kilowatts. And finally, motor frequency under 02-06. Highlight number six, press enter. And we'll set that one to 60 hertz and press enter to save. Now the VFD is set up for this specific motor. Now let's take a look at the maximum and minimum frequency output. Setting this parameter will help to ensure that the motor isn't operated outside of its rated speed range. 00-12 is for the maximum frequency and 00-13 is for the minimum frequency. Navigate to group 00, then highlight number 12 and press enter. We'll go ahead and set your max frequency. This value is set as a percentage of your rated motor frequency. Press enter. Highlight number 13 to set your minimum speed. Your minimum frequency might be zero, or if you want the motor to always be running at low speed, your 00-13 parameter will be higher than zero. I'm gonna set mine at zero and press enter. We can also play with the acceleration and deceleration times. This is the amount of time it'll take to reach a certain speed or the amount of time it takes to stop the motor. Acceleration is under 00-14. Highlight number 14 and press enter. The units for this parameter are in seconds. Press enter. And then we'll do the same for deceleration, which is under 00-15. Highlight number 15 and press enter. Then determine how many seconds you want it to take for the motor to stop. Make your selection and press enter. Now we can run the motor, change speeds to go faster or slower, and then stop the motor all from the VFD. Last but not least, let's talk about factory reset. Say you've decided to use your variable frequency drive in a new application, or maybe you've just been playing with the settings so much that it's time to reset the whole thing. We'll hit display slash function and use the enter button and arrows until we get to 13-08 and press enter. The number you want to enter here is based on the drive's frequency and voltage ratings and the power available to your building. You'll find the list of available options in the drive's instruction manual. We're gonna be setting ours to 60 Hertz and 208 volts. So we'll set this parameter to two and then press enter. And there you have it. You've successfully set up your Tico Westinghouse F510 VFD and are now ready to control your motor. If you have any issues with setting up your VFD, get in contact with our team of technical experts. Once we know more about your application, we'll walk you through your setup so you can get up and running as fast as possible. If you have anything to add, have any questions, or you have a suggestion for another topic for us to cover, leave us a comment below. Make sure you like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, your source for industrial Tigo Westinghouse motors and controls in Canada. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.